Hello Brozones, welcome back to the Ozone, where, uh, well, yeah, welcome to I'm extremely burnt everywhere. It's definitely not, uh, hurting. I'm definitely not in a lot of pain. Uh, today, um, well, actually yesterday, unexpectedly, uh, Matt Putt, uh, uploaded another FNAF 3 new theories kind of video. So I'm going to be reacting to it and I'm going to give you my thoughts throughout it. If you want a deep analysis video on each theory, then uh, I will happily do that. Just let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe because I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers. And remember, you've only got two weeks to get me to 10,000 uh, or else I'm not going to make a timeline video. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So anyway, here we go. <laughs> you stupid ghost thought you could get revenge on me? Do you know who I am? I'm William Afton. I always come back. I am Golden Bonnie. <laughs> I'm about to end this man's whole career. <laughs> I'm about to end this man's whole career. Yeah, that, that's, that's so accurate, that is. Um, I just want to say, he's probably going to be talking about... Uh, the latest epilogue uh, and into the pit and how it has connections and stuff and hopefully he talks a lot about agony if you haven't seen my kind of i guess it's a series now if you haven't seen my series of videos uh explaining agony and stuff go and watch them they're good videos um and yeah i, I he might be talking about the same sort of things but hopefully um i'll know a lot about what he's talking about <laughs> Internet, welcome to Game Theory. He's back. Wet springlock suit clamping down on your subscription feeds. And oh my gosh, guys, finally, after all that waiting, after being patient for so long, after all the delays, it has finally arrived. It is here. A brand new Freddy game just released where we finally get to go up against Vanny the Killer Bunny. Here it is Security Breach. Fury's Rage. Rage. Yeah. I didn't know it had a subtitle. Apparently, it's about an onslaught of angry furries on the attack. Oh. Oh, wait, sorry. Misread that title. It's a Fury. F Fury's Rage. It's not Fu Fury's Rage. Well, anyway, let's fire oh, this God. puppy up. Let's see if they're ready for Freddy. <laughs> Disappointment. What I expected. I mean, it's a game-long apology for all the delays with the real security breach. They're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me when they find out that I have to delay the game again. What am I gonna do? You can tell that Scott's feeling a little guilty these days, huh? Also, apparently he sleeps in a fairy tale bed. Learn a lot about you with this one, Scott. Anyway, just because the official game is still TBD doesn't mean that there's any less to theorize about. We've got a new book, we've got secret bosses, and we've got a lot of pent-up theories behind the floodgates just waiting to pour out. So today, okay. I'm doing another roundup of short FNAF theories. Some looking back to the past, some looking ahead towards the future, and some that are so out there that, well, you're gonna see when we get there. So yeah. open your minds, yeah. your hearts, and your hollow animatronic chest This is gonna be good! Gumdrop Angel was such a good I'm book. Theories in everywhere. It was Theory such a good book. One, we definitely play as Michael Ashton. Yes! Snaf three. I the said this in my video. Drop Angel, released at the beginning of May, we as always have our yes. three main horror novellas. The first is the title feature, Gumdrop Angel. A tragic tale about a girl who transforms into a giant gummy bear right. pinata thing that gets eaten alive by a swarm of saliva mouth kids at a Freddy's birthday party. Talk about your hygiene concerns. This one became a whole heck of a lot scarier reading it in the aftermath of a global pandemic. But oh, as you oh, might yeah. imagine, not a whole lot of lore to be found in a story about a sentient gummy bear. Our second story, Sergio's Lucky Day, is all about Balloon Boy, or should I say Lucky Boy, a doll who's wearing a propeller hat and holding both a balloon and a sign that says, I'm a lucky boy. Right. In this story, our main character, Sergio, finds the doll and ends up buying a lottery ticket because of its advice. The next day, Sergio finds that he won himself $600,000. I won a lottery! That's great. It's a story that's a bit confusing because the doll does seem to offer good advice, encouraging Sergio Sergio to leave a job that he hates, leave a girlfriend oh, that yeah. he hates, upgrade his life in small ways, all things that improve Sergio's existence. But as a result, it's, Sergio... Be I think it's all about a false sense of security, you know? How Lucky Boy is kind of putting him in, almost luring him in, like William Afton did with the children, and then going for the kill, if, if you will. Um, I, I feel like it's that's kind of a parallel. I don't know, I just thought of that off the top of my head, but it is 
sort of like he's luring him in and giving him a false sense of security, security breach, no, I'm joking, uh, and then, you know, telling him to cut his ears off and, you know, cut his eyelids and stuff like that. Uh, it's a gruesome story. <laughs> it really is. As a result, Sergio becomes obsessed with the doll, asking it for advice on everything, including how he can look good for his big high school reunion. Lucky Boy suddenly takes the chance to turn evil and tells him to remove his ears, scalp himself, cut off his eyelids, chisel Ugh. his lips, trim his nose, and remove and reuse other body parts. Yeah, it's gross. Taller. As you might imagine, Sergio makes a big impression at the reunion. Again, not a whole lot to say here since it seems so tangential to the character from the games. I'm assuming that this is going to end up being connected to the upcoming Book 9 story, the Puppet Carver, but uh, we're just gonna have to Ooh. wait and see. And just when you thought that this book wasn't gonna deliver on any lore reveals, we get to our third story. Oh my what god, we found, what we found. Which is quite literally so good. just a retelling of FNAF 3. So tell me if this one starts to sound familiar. A night security guard working at Fazbear Frights, a horror attraction themed around the murders and disappearances happening at the Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria franchise, begins suffering from severe hallucinations the day the crew brings in a spring trap suit found hidden in the walls exactly. of a different building. Hudson, our night guard, winds up trapped in a pizza oven and gets roasted to death at the end of his shift. It is really sad and also a really obvious parallel to the events of FNAF 3, right? Yes. But here's the thing. It also really feels like it's meant to confirm for us that Michael Afton is who we play as in FNAF 3. 100%. I remember back Couldn't agree a couple more. years ago, I had a theory that Mike Afton is our player character in pretty much every game in the franchise. We see the name Mike on FNAF 1's paycheck. Yeah. We see the name Mike again on the monitor and sister location. In fact, the player's guide for that game, The Freddy Files, practically confirms confirms that part of the theory. So that's Mike appearing in two games, but what about FNAF? Two? Wait a second. Did it say the older son, Michael Afton? Have people just completely missed that? Does that, that just, that just confirms that Michael Afton is the older brother. <laughs> well, I mean, we already knew that, obviously. We already knew that. Uh, I don't want to say like that's new information, but I did not know that <laughs> that, that was there. Two and three. The name Mike doesn't appear anywhere in either of them. Well, in FNAF 1, we know that Mike eventually gets fired for tampering with and animatronics odor. and his odor. Yeah. Something that would happen if, you know, he was a rotting corpse walking around. And the same thing appears in FNAF 2 with Frick Smith. Of the dead yeah. kids trapped in the suits put there by his father. So isn't it a little coincidental that Fritz Smith, our protagonist from FNAF 2, gets fired for the exact Banged it. <laughs> same reasons? Tampering Banged it. With the animatronics and odor. I'm calling it's also everything why Michael would by keep the way getting attacked we know from sister Called location it. that he looks just like his dear old daddy and lastly yeah. it's why golden freddy says it's me every time he appears it's the brother's soul crying child trapped in the suit recognizing exactly and out to his sibling mike exactly but then, what about fnaf 3 when i first presented the theory i uh i thoughtfully omitted fnaf 3 it made sense to me from a narrative angle but in terms of actual physical evidence there wasn't a whole lot to point to outside of the hallucinations since the phantom mm, animatronic jump scares in fnaf 3 Three were moments pulled from we thought it was FNAF Michael or Henry, It implies really. that the person seeing them must have been present in both those locations. But beyond that, yeah, bub kiss. However, what we found may have just given us our missing piece. Our security guard Hudson in the story has a very tragic existence. His dad took his own life at an yeah. early age, and his mother got remarried to an abusive man named Lewis. And this guy is... I already know this theory. I, I can tell you what he's about to say. He's about to say that um, all of these hallucinations that he's getting are from his past traumas, his past events, and just because we play as Michael Afton in FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, that means that the phantom animatronics in FNAF 3 have to be those, those like, based off of those animatronics, if you know what I mean. So we have like Mangle and the Puppet, but we also have like Chica and Freddy uh, as phantom animatronics that you must have seen before, and because we play as Michael Afton in FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, then we have to play it in FNAF 3. Oh, that was difficult to get out all at once. <laughs> he is real bad. Eventually, we learn that Hudson seems to have burned his house down, killing this violent man. Another in the bad process, step, and then dad, by the way. Those memories. Yeah. Fast forwarding back to the present day, as he's tormented by Springtrap, he hears his dad's voice coming from the suit. That, along yeah. with a former abusive teacher named Mr. Adkin, or Mr. Adkin, depending on which page you're talking about. I'm looking at you, proofreaders. You got some Wait. explaining to do. Anyway, Hudson Wait, kills what? Really? A father. Oh. 
always comes out of Springtrap along with another person associated with childhood trauma and with a name suspiciously close to Afton. The security guard himself then dies True. in a fire in a tightly I didn't think about that. pizza oven. To me, it sounds a heck of a lot like the journey of Mike, who would also be responsible for burning his Springtrap serial killer father to death at the yeah. end of FNAF 3 before he himself meets a fiery end in FNAF 6, also trapped inside of a small box. It's potentially the confirmation that I've been waiting Man, for we banged years. this. <laughs> Why not? Who knows? Speaking of FNAF 3, here's a small observation that didn't fit anywhere, but I wanted to call out. You know how we're pretty confident that Golden Freddy was possessed by two spirits, Crying Child and Cassidy, the vengeful spirit? Well, it seems like Scott may have been hinting at that since FNAF 3. Three. I couldn't believe it either, but take a look. Okay. Here's a photo of the bad ending from that game. Notice how the mask in the background, Golden Freddy, has two... Okay. Yeah, no, no, I actually, I actually agree with that. Uh, I, I don't want to agree with that, because I don't think that was his intention in FNAF 3. I don't think he knew that there would, there would be two souls later on in the story. But I can agree with that. I think that's sufficient evidence. Um, I mean, I do believe in Golden Duo still. Um, I think that's a very valid theory. Uh, it's, it's one with quite, quite a, a lot of evidence. Uh, and it works very well story-wise too. But that's very interesting there. I've never thought about that. Never thought about that. Found Golden Freddy has two lights on in its eyes instead of just one like all the others. Each light would be representative of a spirit trapped in the suit. Shout out to Game Theorist subreddit user the real Brofi for that one. And for yeah. the subject well done Cassidy, for that. theory number two, Cassidy died in the ball pit. Recently, it was confirmed by Scott Cawthon on Reddit that the Fazbear Frights book series will end at number 11. Random number. With the Wait a second. Okay. Again, I don't want to keep stopping, but um, this is more like a theory discussion more than a, a true reaction video. But um, so Cassidy dies in the ball pit. What can I get from that? Um, I guess that's why the ball pit has a lot of agony um, because there was a death in the ball pit. Um, huh? I I don't really know. Why he's saying Cassidy? So, I I don't know. I don't I don't have any thoughts on that right now. So, let's see what he says, and then we'll see. Twelfth mini book full of stories that didn't make the cut, acting as a bonus. Gotta admit, it's a bit of a shame because this whole time I was hoping they would get seventy six more out of this thing, just so we could yeah. make a joke along the lines of, "Was that the right of eighty seven? Anyway, it means that we're in the end game now, specifically so with the story of Detective Larson and the Stitch Raid, the overarching narrative that happens in the epilogue of each installment. And that's nothing to sneeze at, my friends. Is that idiom acceptable after twenty twenty? Anyway, it's a big deal since this <laughs> is the story that's historically had the biggest lore reveals, most notably the hints that led us to believe that Golden Freddy had two souls trapped inside of him instead right. of just one. Right. And with only three epilogues left before the end of the series, this story needs to have itself a really big payoff. So when we last left our heroes, they had just battled a 15-foot trash rabbit called the Afton Amalgamation. By the end, Larson got infected with the glitch trap virus, and Jake, the remaining spirit inside the Stitch Wraith, realized that he could Repaired use his, um, I yeah. don't know, his, his remnant him. powers to basically go into people's memories and make the good ones stronger in order to help them. Quote, maybe he could pull a memory out a good one and make it bigger and brighter th yeah i i also want to uh point out maybe this could be a like a positive emotion um uh i know that uh, someone pointed this out to me in the comments i don't know who i'm very sorry but dr phineas in epilogue three did say that agony was the strongest kind of human emotion um so there is agony, but there are probably other like positive emotions, uh, and that maybe that's what Jake has. Don't know about that. Just a theory, just putting that out there. But I don't know how he has these weird powers of like people seeing their memories. It's it's kind of weird. Rest. If he could, he could ease the man's pain. It was almost like blowing up a balloon. Only the balloon was a memory, and the air was Jake's will. It's um, it's about on par with the level of insanity you'd expect from FNAF in the year of our lull bit 2021. Yeah. And it, well, that's no, it's certainly true. <laughs> interesting story detail. What I instead want to focus on is Larson's half of the plot. The detective who's been trying to piece together all the mysteries around Fazbear Entertainment. Getting infected by the Afton virus has had some weird side effects on him. Specifically, it's a 
allowed him to hop between the memories of a bunch of Afton's victims. Mm -hmm. Quote, he was getting glimpses of the past. They were memories, but not his own. These images belonged to others from different places and different times. So it feels like this is the literary device that's going to allow the books to explain the missing children's incident. Larson is going to get clues via this I memory guess. hopping to either see for himself uh. or get the clues to investigate what happened to Susie, Gabriel, Fritz, Jeremy, Charlie, and Cassidy. But, but we don't know for sure that the memories he is seeing are from the missing children's incident. We don't know that 100%, I don't think. Uh, tell me guys in the comments if there's any evidence for that. But uh, for the way I see it is, um, I mean, Larson gets all these like hallucinations of the ball pit. Um, they could be from anyone, but it's specifically the ball pit because it has a lot of agony in it. So yeah, I'm pretty sure a child probably died in the ball pit. I still want to know why he thinks it's Cassidy though, in particular. Then things start to take an unexpected turn. One final quote. As his mind swept him from one visit to the past to another, he always saw the same thing in between. He saw a ball pit. Oh boy, here we go, friends. Get ready, yeah. shark. You bout to be jumped. You see, despite all the craziness of the Fazbear Fright story, they've all roughly held to the same logic. Technology infects humans, endoskeletons become haunted, people can be replicated, but there was one that always stood out. For those of you who don't remember, the title story the of pit. a very first yeah. book was Into the Pit. It's the just time travel. How does it work? Time traveling ball pit yeah. that allowed a boy named Oswald to go back to the past to visit the year 1985 and see the after effects of the missing children's incident. Absolutely. As he does this, he's chased down by Spring Bonnie disguised as his father. It was weird because time travel is always weird, but you know, we didn't think too much of it at the time because it was a one-off story in a collection of random one-off stories. Yeah. But now, yeah. now my friends, we're coming back to it. Of all the 24 stories that Fazbear Frights has had, this is the one that the big overarching narrative of the series suddenly deems important enough to come back to for some I know, I know, it's, it's mad. The it's so bad. The travel ball pit. And that's not our only clue that this thing's important. Remember Security Breach, Furry's Rage? More like MatPat's Rage at this point, because not only does the game Wait. include a dabbing Chica, but it also features a secret boss battle if you complete hard mode. A secret boss battle against this. A slithering reference to FNAF 4. What's he gonna say more. here? Chica without her beak, the 6am alarm clock face, the FNAF 4 locked box, what appears to be an IV bag in the back there. Basically, in this one sprite, we have Scott acknowledging that the real final boss of this whole damn series is figuring out what FNAF 4 was trying to tell us. It's also him poking fun at the FNAF 4 dream theory, okay. considering the thing's name, the source code is Dreamgeist. But of all the stuff that's mm -hmm. hidden inside of that head, there's a few random round objects that don't really fit anything from FNAF 4. Are oh! They Easter eggs? Or maybe they're balls from a ball pit. Considering that balls and ball pits have never once been important to this series and wait, in the level where you fight wait, the guys wait, wait, wait. screenshots from previous games sister locations blueprints a camera feed from oh, so there is. again implying some level of time travel or spanning across time because remember dream theory came out before sister location was released which makes that FNAF 5 blueprint reference really stand out here now by no means am I saying that there's time travel in the games or anything like that but the sudden re-emergence of the ball pit in Fazbear Frights opens up a few interesting possibilities yeah. one that Cassidy died in the pit. Remember, the vengeful spirit has powers that go beyond all the other spirits, to the extent that it's able to trap Afton in a state between life and death. So if yeah. anyone or yeah. anything is gonna imbue a ball pit with time powers, Cassidy seems like the one to do it. And we know that someone did die in there because both But I think that's a bit of a stretch to say it's Cassidy about the pits specifically. Balls. Get your mind out of the gutter there, people. Quote, he studied the plastic balls. The substance yeah. covering the plastic old surface blood. looked like blood. Old, old blood. And here I thought the worst thing that happened in a ball pit was I, I did that. Guy. I did that. Fire up the golden Freddy in the ball pit thumbnail, boys. Two, that the series is going to end with Larson and the Stitch Wraith using the ball pit to save the missing children from Afton and release their spirits. Why would I assume something like this? Well, giving Larson memory powers would be enough to tell the kid's story. Let him see glimpses of their trauma, clues that lead him on an investigation. The ball pit, though, becomes necessary if the story plans on him physically interacting with those kids. So I wouldn't be surprised if the ending of this entire entire book series is unwinding the thread that started it all. The missing children's incident kids are saved, which, in the process, undoes all of the other horrific stories that spin out from Ooh. the Fazbear pizzerias. In the process, Scott retroactively gives all the sad stories from the Fazbear Fright series a happy ending. Okay. But I don't think, and I could be completely wrong about this, but I don't 
think that the ball pit actually time travels you. I don't think that that's a possibility. I really like the concept of them going back to the missing children's incident uh, and saving the kids, almost. It's a little bit like the Loki plot right now. <laughs> uh, or Endgame, more like. But um, No, but I... Hmm. Because I, I just think... I just think when you're near the ball pit, you just... You get hallucinations. I don't think it's going back in time. Ah, oh, FNAF! Oh, Matt Pat, why do you do this? Happy ending. And finally, number three, Detective Larson becomes Afton in what is a self-perpetuating time loop scenario. Oh, sure. You all laugh. And trust me, I think it's dumber than what? YouTuber boxing. But hear me out here. We have ourselves a character, Larson, infected by, as the book puts it, Afton's darkness. We also have ourselves a ball pit that allows him to go back in time for some reason that's going to be important to the narrative. So what if Larson winds up going back in time to investigate only for the darkness to take over and turn him? him into William Afton, setting all the events of the story into motion. No. Else, maybe we truly... No. What? No, I don't... I don't like that. What if Larson is Oswald's dad? Because if Larson was Oswald's dad, that would actually kind of makes sense. That's the only way I can see it kind of making sense. Uh, he's obviously going to explain a little bit. I mean, there's, I mean, there's like a minute left of the video. But if, if, let me get it, let me get this straight. If Larson was Oswald's dad, we'd never know what Oswald's dad's name is, if I recall correctly, in the first book. So it'd be a, a massive reveal if um, Larson's, Larson at the end of the Fazbear Frights books gets revealed to be Oswald's dad from the first story of the first book. That would be, like, mind-blowing. I could see it happening. Actually, I can't, because I just remembered that Larson has a son, Ryan, doesn't he? Um, okay, so may maybe that's not a good theory. <laughs> that's not a good theory, but I can't see him going back in time and becoming Afton. That does not make any sense to me. Sorry. <laughs> do exist in the darkest timeline and Scott Cawthon gave the green light to a story that allows Afton to be a creation of his own future self. Tell you what, it would explain how Afton was able to create such futuristic advanced robotics when he was literally in the early 80s because that's no. something that will never get explained. Like I said, that theory it's is just how the dumb, universe but, you works. know, it is on the table. I wouldn't put it past this series. Time travel opens up all sorts of dumb decisions and time loops are real hot right now. And heck, we do see a lot of ball pits in that new trailer. One that comes <laughs> yeah, true. With the that's very true. Huh? Huh? Will I be right? Will I be wrong? We've got ourselves three more books and an indeterminate wait for security wait, to arrive. Wait, so that's mad. Wait, what if... What if we actually time travel through the ball pits? And that's... And security breaches actually in the 80s. <laughs> no, that's that's a crazy theory. Um, <laughs> I don't like that, personally. I don't... Th there's, like, nothing... There's no evidence for it, I don't think. I, I, I can't really think about this. I'm going to do an in-depth talky-talky video about this, I reckon. Um, because, I don't know, I'll, I'll need to think about this more. But I just don't see it happening. I don't see that being where FNAF is going, you know? Um, I seriously don't think that the ball pit can actually time travel you. I, I think it's it's just infected by... I guess, Afton and the Missing Children's Agony, you know? Um, I don't know. Go watch my other videos if you want to know what I think. Um, just plugging my own YouTube videos here. <laughs> Overall, not a bad video. Um, I would, I would, I obviously totally believe the first theory. Totally believe it. Second theory, I'm a little bit on par with, but I don't understand why it would be Cassidy in particular. Uh, I can I can get on par with a child dying in the ball pit. I don't know how Afton would do that, and for it to still be classed as a missing children's incident because the ball pit is going to be in like the middle of the arcade or in a separate room. But Afton killed the missing children um, like in a back room, so I don't know how that's kind of related. I don't know. I. 
my sunburn is infecting my brain. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, uh, that's it. That's one of the worst videos I've ever recorded in my life. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm, I'm joking now. That was actually alright. That wasn't a bad video. Why am, I, why am I still talking about this? Subscribe. Subscribe for more. And, um, yeah.